Hello, good afternoon to all. I am really glad uh, today we have uh, with us Maria Cisternas. Uh, Maria is, um, is a person that is really sensible and uh, expert about cities, which is something that um, we all together work very hard with INIAC to figure out what is the future cities or how we can make our cities better. She's currently the um, director of the um, projects in the Urban Habitat Department of the City Council of Barcelona. So it is also great to see very young people running important uh, uh, positions related to the decisions about our cities. Uh, one of the biggest projects and the biggest challenges that Maria is dealing with, and I guess I guess she will talk about it, is the glorious projects, the neighborhood next to next to here. A big challenge about the city of Barcelona. Uh, Maria is, um, uh, is an architect from the um, University of Barcelona here. She has a Master of the London School of Economics in the uh, Master of uh, Cities and uh, Urban Sciences. Uh, she has been lecturer into the program of the um, uh, Architecture and Sustainable Development in the um, University of uh, La Salle. And uh, she's writing internationally, she's contributed into many, many um, uh, magazines about uh, urban development. So, Maria, thank you very much for being here with us today. We're very pleased as well to have with us um, part of her team such as, for example, Tony Vives, which is the Deputy Mayor of the City Council of Barcelona, as well as Vicente Wayart, Chief Architect of the, of the City of Barcelona, as well co-founder of IAC. They are the big fans of Maria, and thank you so much for being here, and yeah, you know, the word is here. Now it's on. Okay, so thank you, Areti, for this presentation. Can you hear me now? No. I have to shout more or speak more close to the, yeah, this way. Okay, so thanks to the IAC also for inviting me to, to prepare this lecture. I'm advising everyone, this is not a lecture. I haven't had much time because I, we're working really hard at the City Council and we're very busy, busy. But this has been an opportunity to think a little bit, to zoom out um, on our everyday work and think what exactly we're trying to do and um, which are our main objectives. So thank you for the opportunity to letting us reflect on what we're doing. Um, my presentation will be around one of the projects that we're running, one that you will have probably seen, which is here, La Plaza de las Glorias. Many of you will have uh, surely realized that we're uh, doing some work there. And um, first of all, I have to describe what is my job now. As an architect, I'm not responsible for designing the final images of the um, of designs, but my role is more um, uh, designing, managing the process. If, in fact, my thesis is that designing the public realm is a, <laughs> is a thank you. <laughs> uh, um, designing the public realm is a, is it, itself a process and that the most important things that uh, the, the most important thing about public realm is what happens in it but this is a very sensitive question because there are um, designs that tend to over determine what happens on them and there are other designs that are more flexible more open that tend to um, foster all kinds of activities and thus um, provoke more kinds of interaction. So I'm, I have based my, my presentation on 10 ideas and I am trying all the time uh, to explain in red what, what we are trying to change in, on the paradigm, what, what, what our paradigm is trying to change, how we are trying to change the way cities have traditionally worked. So the first thing is uh, thinking that the city is something incremental. This is the final project for La Plaza de las Glorias. Most of you will have seen it. It's the Canobia Urbana, the um, project that has won this international competition. And this is how La Plaza de las Glorias, um, someone 
at, uh, in the 60s thought um, should evolve. So from this image of a park, a pacified square, to this image of uh, solving the issues of, of vehicles and cars, there have been many things that uh, the way the city has thought it should evolve has changed very much. This is um, an image of the same time. And this is um, the most, this is what's happening now. To achieve, to arrive to the final vision, to arrive to the um, final design of the Canopy Arwana, there are many things that have to happen. And probably it will take five to seven to ten years. It will take a long time to reach that, um, that time. But while the works are taking place, which are impressive and they're beautiful to see as well, you have to think that there are many people who actually pass every day there. There are old people, there are um, young people, there are children who are maybe now five years and will be ten years when this finishes up or will be fifteen. So um, part of our job at the City Council is thinking from this period of time, from this lapse to the final delivery of the project, what will, happy, what will happen and what will be the impact for the lives of these people. So this is also a beautiful image um, of people actually like to observe what's happening in their cities. Um, one of the first operations in La Plaza de las Glorias, apart from demolishing the viaduct, is uh, um, moving the area of Ancans Vells, the um, Marche Opus, let's say, the um, um, Camden Town local here in Barcelona, to a formal market uh, where um, people sell all kinds of things, from furniture to books to recycled things. and. It has generated um, a very positive dynamics in the sense that um, there was the danger that all this activity disappeared and it hasn't disappeared. It has moved from one side to the square to another side. It has now um, more comfortable conditions. It's an up-to-date space and in a certain way assures that in the public realm happen uh, many activities and uh, lots of people uh, gather there. Because one of the challenges in Las Glorias is to create a center. And to create a center is one of the most complicated things uh, in a city. You cannot say this is going to be a center because you have the risk that it simply doesn't happen. So um, the, um, the way you design the process to reach the center in a way to take advantage of every uh, decision you take to keep the people going there um, will count favorably on the on the final use of the of the project, and this is um, compared to this uh, area here. Okay. To this area here, we're talking about the Market dels Encants, in which we have um, located all the activity of the Marché Opus. Um, this is the ground floor activity of all the um, warehouses and uh, um, ground floor levels that have been emptied because of um, the changes in this area. So this is, an, uh, this is a typical image of, the area of an area in transformation in which um, the economic activity tends to disappear, density tends to disappear, and there's a um, um, terrible dynamic that risks, at the end, not reaching the, um, the density you wanted to, to achieve. The economics is also very important. Like um, This is a project that is five, uh, almost 600 million euros of investment for a city, for an enterprise, for a company, for whichever is going to take these um, investments. There has to be a mechanism to do them, to, to put the money at the right time. So the way you decide doing each step will determine the, the final outcome and how the public realm will be useful for the people uh, of the city. Things that have to be done in Las Glorias. 
it has to change all the mobility infra infrastructure and, in, and uh, construct a tunnel so that the vehicles go underneath. It has to have a park. It has to compensate all the people who live there and who have to move towards new buildings. It has completed already the design museum and the Encants market. There will be an administrative building and the local amenities at the neighborhood scale. You know that this is a process that started in 2003 with the uh, neighbors of uh, Las Glorias uh, asking the city to turn down the viaduct. And uh, since then there has been an uh, um, there has been um, an outline shared by the administration and the neighbors for which all the transformation would bring into the square all the local amenities that the five neighborhoods that surround La Plaza Las Glorias need uh, in order to make it a, a vibrant center. And it will also have uh, social housing units uh, around 500. Now, what has changed? in the way we design the public realm. This is uh, how in the 19th century what was expected from, from the um, public realm. Cities started uh, designing public space because of health problems, because it was the, because in the common spaces was where um, you would have all the uh, pandemics, epidemias, cholera, whatever. Um, and this is, you know, the John Snow map for the cholera map, where he um, discovered by pointing out all the people who had cholera, where did they come from? And out from this plan, he could um, uh, deduct, he made the deduction that uh, cholera was caused by a source of water, of public water, uh, polluted uh, water. So the 19th century is all about, um, this is an image of Barcelona appeared at La Vanguardia at, at the beginning of, of the century, of the century um, in which um, people from around all Catalonia called Barcelona Canfanga. Canfanga meaning um, the city of uh, wet space uh, in which everybody got uh, their um, their shoes um, dirty because there was no um, pavement in the streets. So all the plan of Sarda is how to pave the streets, how to make them dirty, how to um, get um, nice, um, up-to-date health conditions. And since then, um, when um, the country becomes mostly urban and stops being rural, um, all the um, all the approach is thinking how to uh, build massive housing units, how to uh, provide affor affordable ha homes for, for everyone. Maybe forgetting what was the 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 everyday life of people in their ci in their uh, cities, and in this transition from constructing the city of the 19th century to the 20th century, losing many of the qualities of the space that had the vernacular or the more organic uh, traditional city, and then comes the, t the era of uh, mobility and infrastructures and uh, cities start thinking how to get fast from one point to another, thinking in terms of uh, vehicle connection, and this is the case of Las Glorias. No? The, the whole construction of the viaduct is thought in the, uh, w with an idea in mind that is um, managing congestion. Now the 21st century what should be doing? My thesis is that the 21st century is the age of public realm and that we have to think how, um, why some uh, public spaces work and why other public spaces do not work. Why some public spaces concentrate, uh, activities are really central, are um, representative for the city or um, how to use deleric spaces to organize uh, informal activities. And if the 20th century was the time of uh, mobility infrastructures, uh, as you know, and this is the case of Broadway in New York, you, have all, you all know this project, um, 
it's the time when um, pedestrians colonize again their um, the space. The second paradigm would be how we used to design for the people and now we are trying to design with the people. This of course is very risky because you have to um, put the question, you have to be very open, you have to assume the risks of opening the, the um, dialogue with many more um, people instead of a bunch of architects and experts which you can control towards an audience of, two, of 200, 500 people who actually have something to say about uh, their public space and they have the right to do this. But you have to have the tools to make them contribute positively on, this, on, the, um, on the objectives uh, that you want to, to achieve. This is the, jour the, um, the um, journeys we did on, on the um, public space for Las Glorias. Before launching the competitions for architects, we asked um, local neighbors, associations, entities, and citizens around the city what were their, expect their expectations on the, si on the future area of Las Glorias. And it was funny because there was this um, debate amongst the architects about uh, for which Las Glorias should be a um, very um, hard space, um, very paved, um, because there was the danger that it could not become a center, um, that we that uh, we could never reach a park, and um, there was also this. Um, Willings, when we read all the postage that we took, in which 90% of the people said, We want a park here. And we want a park which has amenities, which um, they reference park was uh, La Ciutadella Park, uh, which was full of activity, which is a central park because there are many people going there from all around the city. And that, um, so the outcome was very clear. Um, the the and also we had uh, prepared a series of um, of uh, objectives and they had to point um, their priorities. So at the end, we had it very clear from the participation of these three days what were the priorities identified for Las Glorias. This allowed, on the first thing, to seat architects and neighbors at the same space. All the architects that were participating at the competition could hear what the aspirations were, so it was fair play, everybody knew what was happening. And at the end, we published the results, what were the aspirations, and we gave them to the architects to uh, take them into consideration if they wanted. And the other thing is not only neighborhoods and citizens, but also thinking of politics. Many of the decisions that have to, that influence the public realm have to be discussed in the political sphere. So every, um, decision taken or every um, investment that is willing to be done in uh, Las Glorias has to be shared amongst all the political parties and they have to reach an agreement to allow uh, for this investment to happen. Um, so, in a way, it's not narrowing the decision making, but it's on the contrary, it's opening and submitting it to many, um, to many in, um, different in, um, actors. The third paradigm, from the infrastructural approach to the human scale. Now, Las Glorias, this is a series of um, maps of, of um, no, no, not maps, aerial photographs of the area of Las Glorias from um, the 1960s to 2011. Well, you know that uh, the origin of Las Glorias is uh, with La Fonsardà. That Sardà uh, oriented the square here with the direction, not following the, um, the, uh, the grid that he had set out for all the city, but recognizing the direction of the um, tram, not the tram, the um, train. So then many 
um, since 1950s, the city council has been trying to um, propose uh, different solutions. It's very funny to see them um, according to the priorities of the time. The general metropolitan plan um, recognizes Las Glorias as a highway, as a, um, as a series of infrastructures to connect all the directions. And this is because the, all the territorial access of Barcelona, the Diagonal, the Meridiana, and Gran Via confluence here. So it's very difficult for a car to get from one point to another um, without doing it uh, in a circular way. So at the 90s, the, the city council comes for, with a finance solution it's saying we will make a circular solution that will allow for all the movements from one uh, artery to another. And from here, uh, arriving to the master plan. The other part of thing is thinking how to to think with the long term, but also thinking with the impact that the, this long term will have in the everyday life of people. The construction site um, has the danger to make, uh, to devaluate all the property values, to um, make people change their daily itineraries, to um, become marginal, to become desertized. And our approach is thinking, well, what should be doing that it's not very expensive, that doesn't change the investment plans, in a way to keep the activity there and to colonize the space while uh, we uh, concentrate the construction site. This is um, how the Plaza Las Glorias looked two years ago. This is how it would look like, thanks to the proposal of, um, of um, Canopia Urbana, and this is how um, we will be doing the works towards uh, the reached proposal. I'm going to pass it again. So the first thing is uh, deconstructing the viaduct, first from one side then to the other side. And here um, there appear many um, empty spaces for which there is, there is no investment uh, previewed that um, have been deleric spaces or that have the danger that they become underused or uh, places to simply um, put all the construction um, materials. And um, our approach is just the contrary, is why don't we start thinking of these um, borders here as places where people gather. In a way, um, provoking the future activities that will, take on, that will take place in the park, but making them happen in the border. Why the border? Because we think um, the borders are these areas of, of confluence where two ecosystems meet, like where, um, two, uh, where a neighborhood meets another, where one type of uh, construction meets another type. And this generally in the in cities, these border spaces have been um, places where people meet, where people where markets take, take place, where um, the informal activities take place. Why not um, using these borders to um, place the playgrounds, to place the um, places for playing sport? to place um, all kinds of activities so that the neighborhoods, ca the neighbors can start using the, this area as a park uh, from the minute zero. We have tested this. Um, uh, now we know how to do this with uh, very few investment, with um, a very small budget, we have made incredible changes in the city. This is what's what we call the micro -organizations. This is a micro made by Tony Gironès in, um, 
in Panadidas, next to Palauel, next to La Ramblas. And in a six months time, he has designed the project, we have approved it, we have approved the investment, and we have changed absolutely the way it looks with a really tiny, tiny, tiny budget. Or this is another micro organization in the area of Las Planas, in, um, in the Consola, in the Colchola Mountain, in which we have built a playground, a basketball playground, uh, some stairs with woods, and um, have uh, made some banks for people to sit, and that's all. And suddenly a space that was uh, underused, it was a parking, in fact, here, um, becomes an active space for people to meet. And now there are competitions on Sundays to really arrive the first to this place and, um, may and get the property of the baseball, b basketball playground. Um, this is to explain how the demolition of the viaduct is made possible. It's not only um, thinking how the work has been done, but we have been for the last for the last past two years making um, other operations in the city that have allowed for the mobility. Um, the mobility um, uh, model to change here. Now, one of the main operations is this, is connecting Tanger with Ali Bay. This uh, street, incredibly enough, used to be cut here at the Pont de Marina because the Pont de Marina was at another um, height and you could not pass, simply it was, a, it was cut. The same happened here in Badajoz and in Independencia. So there, incredibly enough, there were many streets of the grid of Sarda that were not connecting. So the first operation has been opening the grid, making all cars um, use the grid as what it is, as a place that is homogeneous, so it's the same to take uh, one horizontal street um, as another to finally reach this model in which um, you make a big turn and you don't have to use the central space. This mobility scheme has a translation into the public realm of the square. Also, okay, we will have the Gran Via with this strange shape that has this um, like an eye shape um, for until 2018, when we will have built the tunnels here at the empty space. In the meantime, it was crucial to use the same approach to connect the verticals with the verticals and the horizontal straights here. So what we have made is to design um, a temporary uh, urbanization that recognizes that instead of a circular space, which tends to um, bring people aside from the, from the space, to a space that is connected with a grid. So recognizing the continuity of this space here, this other continuity here, um, putting the right, um, the right connections from one side to the other, so that it's easy, intuitive, and, um, and easy for people to um, go from one place to another of the square. Other things we have made is in this area here, we have been thinking that um, we can um, put some local amenities like a basketball um, facility, um, playgrounds for children, an area, a multi-purpose area for uh, dancing or sports activities, um, uh, adventure activities here. But also, we have designed three um, small buildings that we think will bring a lot of activity here, or at least will um, be the warranty for that the uh, public space has always someone there um, taking a look on what's happening. Um, 
for those of you who had visited Las Glorias before, here there was a big park in which there were 230 big trees that we want to reuse at the final design of the park. We are building here a temporary location for these um, trees, which will be, um, you will, as a neighbor, you will have the right to pass around, that it will be like a garden that one can visit, schools will be able to go there, and they will also be able to plant their little um, trees so that they grow and they uh, become the future trees of the park. And we have thought of, um, and tourist information center here, a pergola here, um, a place where you ha can have a shadow because otherwise this is a very big space that um, in which you can get a lot of insulation, and an elevated uh, building where you can observe um, the works taking place in the plaza. So I'm gonna pa I'm gonna pass quickly through this. This is the pergola, which is a very um, light construction using the materials of um, of um, tissues and um, recycling um, other um, publicity materials that we uh, have on the city. This is the um, so th this pergola is here. We have the information, tourist information building here, which will look like this, which is a very um, a double skin building that has um, an exterior skin made of metallic um, net, nets and an interior wall that it's made of wood. And that will look like something like this, in which there will be some uh, electric uh, bikes to rent. You will have all the information concerning the transformation of the plaza, where you will have the panel showing uh, which works will take place when. And um, there will be a couple of people receiving people and from the city council and explaining what the works will, will look like. So this is how the uh, pavilion will look like. And incredibly enough, and th this is the third building, which will be placed here at one of the uh, sites of Las Glorias, which will have this, which will look like this. It's a stair that you can go up, ha see uh, from an elevated point of view what's happening, and then go down and we'll have this shape. What's very important of these structures is that also working with uh, all the areas of the city council, we have, uh, we have found funding um, from the commercial center or from the tourist tax to actually um, pay for these structures. So they will have no extra cost for the, for the plaza. The fifth paradigm would be, and I will go quickly now because I see you're <laughs> tired, um, going from a final closed system to something that is more open, that is more temporary and more ephemeral. These are the images of uh, a festival we organized with uh, Rebominart, an entity that um, that groups many artists in the field of urban graffiti. And we gave them the um, the, um, the area of Ancans when all the Ancantistas, when all the people selling uh, books and furniture went to the final market, we had this empty space that would be Delaric. We are currently now, we are putting all the concrete that uh, comes from the destruction, uh, from the deconstruction of the viaduct into this place here. But there was a time lapse of uh, one weekend in which this could be free before the work started. So we said, why don't we uh, use this free weekend to organize an arts festival? And it was incredible because local people from um, neighborhoods, um, schools, design schools, people from all around the city um, came here. They could um, do their own designs. They could express what they wanted for the future park of Las Glorias. And um, it generated a very interesting effect, which was um, in these windows here, having all the people who usually pass around Las Glorias and think that this is a viaduct that um, has no solution, actually 
waiting, um, staying there for five minutes, and observing this with another with another potential, thinking, hey, what this is very big. I had never been here, and what's happening here? And this is what happened from the other side of the windows. No, you had. Um, people who used in their daily routines, they passed around and they thought, what's going on? Uh, what is this space? Or groups of uh, people going by bike also. The same happens with the exteriors of uh, the, the hub, the, the design hub. Have the very big building, the grey one that is um, at the centre of the plaza, in which it's very important that the, the activity that happens inside somehow colonises the space outside. The sixth paradigm would be going from a model that is hard, artificial and resource consuming to a model that is more renaturalised, permeable and more sustainable. We know that um, the world biocapacity has been large the past, since uh, 1987. We need more than one Earth to keep uh, consuming what we consume. So this has an impact on cities, and there have to be mechanisms on cities to um, low down the ecological footprint of what we produce in the, in the Earth. Um, and experts say, and biologists and all ecologists coincide, that it's very important in cities to connect this um, green infrastructure. That the slow, that the, it's not the same, adding small spaces add as uh, it has a more valuable effect if you are able to make a big connection. And this is uh, taken from the Canopia Urbana, from the proposal that won the competition, in which uh, they made a very powerful diagnosis. They said, this is how the um, Plaza Dal looked like. It had a very good balance of green space and built space, of open space and uh, built space. And now this is how it looks like. So, in a way, their um, proposal was a manifesto for saying, no, why don't we use the last big space in the city to um, recompose this uh, green artery from, white from one side to the other. And it was funny because uh, of all the proposals that, are, that were presented at the competitions, these people um, made a, an architectural proposal made with vegetation and with trees instead of with uh, bricks or other materials. So what they create is a landscape, uh, an open system that can have many shapes, but at in the end is a sustainable and um, self-sufficient um, green infrastructure that um, can last over a large period of time. So instead of designing the views of uh, how the buildings will look like, they provide plans of the biodiversity that will uh, foster this kind of development or the climatic comfort. I was this um, weekend walking around um, the beach in La Barceloneta. It was crazy how many people there were. Some of you were there this weekend? No? Yes. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> It was incredible. I had never seen, not in July. And why is that? Because in March is the best time to go to the beach. Everybody knows that. Because it's not too hot, it's fantastic, you have a very slow wind. And um, because of the climatic comfort of this area, it was crowded of people. So I think this is very sensitive for creating a center. Now, how you can be comfortable at a nice temperature in a public space will determine whether you go there or not. The seventh um, paradox is working by intuition or working by facts, designing because you have an extraordinary intuition as an architect or based in real facts. Um, and we have the tools now to know how people move around La Plaza Las Glorias. We have been producing a series of, uh, a series of a series of maps in which uh, which they show how people uh, use the space and which are the most used itineraries. Now it would be crazy to try to design the new park of Las Glorias without considering this. 
um, because this gives a very powerful information. It tells you actually how people use the space and how they are more likely to use it in the future because they have interiorized these um, itineraries in their daily routines. So we counted in every point how many people passed there um, with going by bike or going uh, or pedestrians. And we got to a nice conclu conclusion, which was actually how the level of connectivity of this space used uh, worked with the viaduct. And we started um, modeling how it will look like when uh, the viaduct is not there or when the tunnels are there. And the result of this is that, that uh, the morphology of the space will make it more um, more accessible, so it will make more easy for the people to go, to go one place to another, so it, at the end it will make it more central. It will have more um, points, let's say. Yeah, it will tend to be more um, crowded, more used, because it will be easier to get there. The eighth point has to do with the housing that we have to build there, because in Las Glorias, apart from the park, there have to be we have to build uh, buildings. So, from a model in which we build expensively impersonal buildings or serialized, like products for the banks or mortgages, to a to a model that is more just, more evolutive, and more tailored. You all know, all if you are architects, you will all know this proposal from Candelis Josiki Woods uh, from the 70s, in which they um, advocated for um, housing design that is very flexible, in which the city council will, would only have to put the floors, and then people, with when they get um, a larger family, or when they have more income, or simply in time, they will um, do um, all the works in their houses. These buildings will have to be self-sufficient, they will have to be productors of energy, and they will have to have um, zones of climatic comfort for um, and the um, pla spaces in between, before, um, between interior and exterior. The ninth key question is how will the the local amenities the equipment buildings will have to look like they will have so from the model of underused facilities we in Barcelona have, are specialists in having a lot of lot of amenities but that look like um, old fashioned really for not for people of your age uh, not uh, sexy not uh, usable to convert them into vibrant buildings, buildings that have a connection with their ground floor level, that invite people to to enter and to really um, use what's happening uh, culturally inside of the building that has a translation into the public space. And organizing um, festivals that take place in the buildings uh, and have a translation uh, on the public realm. And the tenth point is um, from a parent that is conductivist, that is trying to over-determine what has to happen in this space uh, from the um, willingness of the architect saying this has to, people have to act like this in my building to um, to um, to a design mechanism that is that has a continuous improvement. One of the things we know is that um, there are more people who have a tablet or a telephone than a um, PC, la, but in the table one. Um, and this has a translation in the way we learn about cities. There are probably, I think there are two ways to make innovation in cities. One is through materials, through the materiality, to the forms. And the other one is to really use the new information that we have on how people use the city to design better. This is a map of how um, of how many uploads in Twitter um, and Facebook uh, there are in Barcelona. 
and uh, it's funny how the central areas um, also provoke that people interact more in the um, in the um, innova uh, in the technology sphere. So in a way, it's saying the public realm happens in central areas, but also has a translation in the internet and in the online communications. This is also how the um, um, cities perform in terms of tourism. Barcelona, you know, is a small city compared to other big renowned uh, European cities. And what you extract from these maps is that Barcelona has a lot of tourism, um, but that it's very congested. And that's what you feel when going around Ciudad Bella, that probably the concentration of tourists is higher than in other European cities of reference. So it's key for Barcelona to start thinking of um, of other centers that can decentralize the activity uh, in terms of tourists and visitors. This is an image also to say um, the, the question of climate, no? um, how old people are experts in terms of climatic conditions because they always look for the sun, they always look for the um, best banks in the public space. It's a good indicator that these banks have been well placed. But aside from the intuition or the experience of old people, we have uh, tools to actually know where are the um, best places in town, where are the places that uh, keep the heat, or which are the, um, the places that um, ec uh, explode and, and put the heat, uh, or, or that are more refreshing. Um, this is an image that I like very much from Gal Architects, very funny, um, in which they measured, because this is another thing we don't do in public space, usually measuring how many people use public space. And they said, okay, um, we have a sidewalk that is really narrow, in which there are around 50 people. Uh, compared to the road, in which there are some cars that are um, used by one or two people, it's incredible how we're giving these people such a narrow place while we're giving these people such a um, generous space so that they, ha they can keep moving um, fast. No? So in terms of being just, measuring things is important so that you can take the objective decisions on how much space you give to one or another. Other things we have to start designing, and this is an open question, I'm not saying we are solving these questions with us glorias, it's a challenge. Um, but things we have to start um, analyzing in cities. How do people use the city? How do people use the metropolitan area? Like these are plans of London in which you get, for example, um, where are the non-domestic buildings concentrated? Well, here you have an index of uh, mixicity. <coughs> and you can clearly see that London is a very uh, mixed city in its city center, in... Um, in um, in central London, but it is not in greater London. Or, and this has clearly a translation in this, which is this next map is how people travel to work by car or by motorbike. No, All the people living in the periphery, then um, because they do not have um, offices there, they do not have representative building or amenities, have to always take the car to get to the city center. Or, very important as well, um, how do people live in terms of the social distribution? Like, um, this is a very uh, surprising map saying couple households, uh, couples with uh, one or two children are living outside in the metropolitan area, while in greater London area they tend not to live there. So this has also to make you reflect on whether, why these people are choosing to live in the suburbs and so how will this um, induce mobility uh, at the city centre and um, 
probably this helps balancing the amount, the the good amount of um, green space in in uh, city centers. This is another type of data we could be collecting from the public space. This is taken from BBVA, uh, a bank, in which they count from the credit cards when you go and pay from a terminal. Um, at every hour, they geolocalize this transaction. So at the end, you get um, interesting map saying at 8 o'clock nobody is buying anything at, uh, in Barcelona. And uh, particularly at 11 o'clock, nobody is using the 22 at area in Barcelona here, the Poplano. So where you're studying here around at 11 o'clock is quite dead. Uh, funny, funny enough, then at uh, lunchtime, there start to be transactions because all the people that uh, work here go to have lunch and whatever. And at night they come back to their homes and there are no transactions. Well, this is kind of data that we, we have to, to use to design public space. All, um, moreover, if we want to use public space from zero to 24 hours. No? Well, and this is the last um, slide to conclude, which is, um, and it's in Catalan, sorry, I didn't have to <laughs> translate it, but I'm going to translate it now. What would the be, what would be the three main um, objectives that drive uh, the projects we do? A design that really um, provides solutions for social, um, environmental, economic challenges, uh, current and future. A design that is attentive to daily routines of people. And a design that is open and flexible and that can foster um, many uh, situations. And then the final, how, how do, what do we spend our most time doing? It's not providing the final solutions, that's what architects do for the city council. What we're trying to do is to coordinate with all these departments in the city council to actually achieve this vision. And it's a challenge, it's a very nice challenge, um, a complicated one, but uh, a very reconforting one. So thank you very much. How much time will it take for, for the glorious uh, project to complete? Because I think there is a, a kind of important... I mean, what is interesting, first of all, is the fact that... Uh, sorry. Okay. Um, I think that uh, it's very interesting, especially for us, that we are from the academy part of, of the world, let's say, um, to, to really see this kind of uh, presentations and the project, because uh, there are many aspects um, uh, when you try to implement an idea, no? from the idea to the final implementation, even the impact evaluation, there is like a big uh, process that we usually don't take into consideration because we usually envision, you have ideas, no, very, uh, uh, we're more like into cultivating ideas and new visions. So I think it's very important that when we see this kind of presentation, there are many aspects, especially when we speak about such an important and big space within the city, um, a transformation of um, of a, such an urban, uh, a, such a dense, let's say, space as well, no? Where we have a lot of services already, there is already mobility, like, uh, which is the most important part of the city. And um, it makes me think that, uh, of course, uh, all this kind of time uh, that uh, this project needs, uh, apart from the, um, from the fact of focusing of what is the idea and the implementation, the construction, there are many parallel projects on what will happen 
happen in the in all those years of the of that the construction will take place no how you can keep on offering services to the people how you can keep on solving the mobility in the different phases and I, I know you saw a slide with the phases but um, it, I think it would be interesting that you also uh, talk about uh, this kind of big challenge of what is happening in between no within the phase of the construction side well, first of all, I think one of the um, challenges is to manage complexity. It would be much easier if there were less people on the table, but this wouldn't be democratic, no? It would be more a top-down approach, it would be more clear, probably we wouldn't make any mistake, or we would perceive the mistakes at the very end. We would um, perceive um, that at the end the expected result is not uh, is not the final result. Um, so in a way, in a society that is more horizontal, that in which there are many people who have a say, and in which many people have the education and the knowledge to really have a, an op an opinion that counts. This is a challenge, and this is very new. This is from the last 30 years, at least, in Barcelona. How, of course, we have the engineering side also, that also needs um, their, their space, because uh, uh, wor the works that take place in Las Glorias are very serious. I mean, <laughs> having uh, uh, 50,000 vehicles every day going around, and making the deconstruction of the di of the viaduct at the same time that these cars go around is very serious. I mean, only for secu security issues, this has to be a compromise between uh, the logics of uh, of the works and the logics of the city. You know? um, and in a way, for me, it's also been a discovery. Like I, I when I was a student, um, my my formation as an architect, um, my training as an architect was all about the final project. Was all about um, is this project better than the other one? Is this um, more beautiful? Has this one got best perspective? And it's fantastic that that most architects can spend their time thinking of this, but there have to be some other technicians taking into the account into account the management of the of this time in me and while right. Um, but yes, I think this of Do course. Do you think, for example, that technology can help on this kind of part? of the construction, do you think that by really, uh, you were speaking a lot about um, uh, taking data and information of the site, mm. uh, do you think that this could influence, let's say, the construction site and could be a kind of like dialogue between what is happening, how the people are using the space and how the construction goes on? Of course, on two ways. One for the final park. For this park, it will be crucial to actually get the data in real time. Um, what temperature will be there at some point? Where uh, will the people be concentrated? Um, there's going to be an agora center for digital interchange. So for the final for the final park, it's key. But for the works now, also we are. I think we have spent like three hundred thousand euros in a sensorization plan that is going to tell us exactly. Very useful data. How much, uh, and, and very, not interesting one, but how much um, noise are we producing with the works? People have many perceptions. You can, when we sit with neighbors, they say, we are hearing a lot of noise. What is a lot of noise? So you have to measure how much noise you're producing and at which times, because maybe there are some hours in which you can produce noise, but there are some hours in which people have to sleep. Um, we are also counting how many bikes they're happening, they're um, using the space, uh, how many pedestrians are using the space, uh, the, the pollution. Uh, it's very important. Also, in terms of politic, in terms of public policies, to invest so much money in a space, we must 
uh, justify why we're doing this. Um, we have to measure how it used to work before and how it performs later. And, w and we have a responsibility because we have said with our plan, our output, well, our expected output will be that we will reduce the pollution by 20% in NOx particles. But we have to really measure this and to be able to justify, no? So it's very important. Hello. Thank you, firstly, for the wonderful conference. Um, in your last slide, you were talking about how it's very important in the objectives to sort of offer social and environmental and economic solutions. And in the presentation, it was very clear that uh, there is a lot of ecological compensation going on and the social interaction in the project. But um, it was not so clear about the economic outcomes, mm. inputs and outcomes. How do you finance the project, particularly in this time of crisis? I'm quite interested to know a bit more about that. This is very important. Uh, um, well, Las Glorias will be one of the last projects in Barcelona in which there is a lot of public money um, to achieve this. Uh, and in part, this is very um, reasoned because it has, it's, it's been an area that has many risks because the risk to not getting to the final, the risk not getting a central space <laughs> is there. Um, and um, so there will be a lot of uh, public money invested here. How has it changed the approach? Now, typically, the um, city council y ha uses economic rates to, um, to, um, for their budgets, and typically it would be um, 250 euros per square meters to urbanize a space. Here we're talking that the provisional urbanization is around 50 euros per square meter. So it's five times less for all the temporary activities and all the um, using, uh, activating the, the borders. Uh, of course, we are also working and this is not only from the urban habitat department, but with the um, economic department, the promotion economic, how would it be? It would be um, economic development department of the city council, in which they're um, they're studying um, how, from every euro put from the public sector, you get two or three from the private sector, right? Um, so, yes, we are also working on this. Um, it's not depending on us, also I have to, one has to know <laughs> what their limits are. But uh, we're working coordinatingly with them. And what's very key for this, and they're telling us, it's to have a plan. If you have a, um, a calendar, if you give certitude to the private, people, if you g can really see, if e even if it's a very long process, if you can trace out the whole plan and say this year will happen this, and you keep accomplishing these uh, objectives, then it's very clear. Um, then investors really uh, put money. Uh, yeah, proof of this, security. proof of this, it's what's happening with um, Torre Akbar, the Akbar Tower that, that it has had uh, private investment to make a hotel there. They have seen the operation. They have, yeah. Uh, yeah, I had a question about, you showed the plan, the, the one with the future green. The? The future greens yeah. of Barcelona and the present. Uh, so it includes a lot about the Besos in that kind of an area, which is not so much talked about as far as the public realm's concerned. So are there any future plans of uh, extending this development over to that part too? So you're meaning this plan, this map here? From this to Besos, so it's kind of a transition of public spaces being spread out, or is it being thought of, or is it Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because looking at all the areas, it seems it's way too dense onto the current public spaces, mm -hmm. and that part's more 
of like left out areas. Uh -huh. Now I understand your question. So in a way you're asking how the development of Las Glorias will positively influence or negatively um, this part of the city. Or is there some kind of a transformation of public spaces spreading out all over the city rather than just pinpointing one single mm -hmm. site of mm -hmm. yes. exploring public spaces? Now in, in this um, presentation I have had to summarize. <laughs> And I have taken one project, which is one of, of the projects that takes m most of my time. But yes, of course, for first thing, I think this is what happens in Las Glorias is key for the east side of uh, Barcelona, because somehow it, it really shifts the center from this point here to this point here. So La Gran Vía, uh, which is this territorial axe that connects from Castelldefels to, to Mataró, when passing through Barcelona, it has already very key points, such as La um, Plaza España, Plaza Universitat, Plaza Catalunya, and that will have Las Glorias. And this is shifting the, the this is moving the outskirts of Barcelona beyond the the Besos area. Um, but I, I have to admit that um, what happens in Las Glorias will not have a, a positive impact directly uh, on Vasos. What can probably um, influence Vasos is the process now. If we are able to um, engage in a similar process, then, um, then um, there can be synergies created. No? Uh, if there is no other question, then uh, Maria, thank you very much. And